Hello, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Today we're going to be testing out the new Too Faced Appley in Love eyeshadow palette. We're going to be doing three different looks and I will show you comparisons to some of their other palettes and I'm just really excited to get into this one. I feel like we are starting to get eyeshadow palette launches again. Maybe that's just the season going into the holidays. I don't know, but I'm very, very excited for it. These are just my absolute favorite products to review. So this is what the outer carton looks like and this is the Appley in Love palette. This has a 12 month shelf life. This is bulk made in the US and assembled in the Dominican which is pretty standard for Too Faced eyeshadow palettes especially their fall launches. Now this is available now at Ulta and on the Too Faced website. This is not yet available in Canada but it will be soon. I do think this is still quite early for Too Faced. I mean this is launching at the end of July. I believe last year their holiday palette came out at the end of August and I think that's typically what they do but this is going to be their holiday palette for this year. So this is an apple inspired palette with neutral red, green, and warm caramel shades in multiple finishes and a creamy blendable formula. 18 shades smell like caramel apples and this retails for $54. So that is the average cost of their fall palettes as well. And then opening up the package. This is what the component looks like and this is a return to their tin packaging which is really exciting. I know last year their fall palette was in cardboard and I think a lot of us were a little disappointed. I have no issue with cardboard personally but I do love the tin packaging that they typically do for their holiday palettes. So I am really excited to see a return to this. And the apples here are actually raised which I think is a really nice touch. And I don't know if this is just me but does anybody else think of Desperate Housewives when you see this apple packaging? Let me know if I'm crazy, but opening up the palette, this is what it looks like. So it is a variation of their typical color story that they do every fall. However, looking at this, it looks like we're actually leaning more into some reds, some wine red shades. We've got some greens in here as well, whereas they typically try to throw in more pops of purple, occasionally a blue, and it usually ends up being a pinky brown palette. We do have a lot of that here too, but this is definitely leaning into those warm tones with some reds and greens, which I think is really, really pretty. So let's take a look at some swatches. So we have Sweet On You, which is an off-white matte. Then we have Sparkling Cider, which is a really beautiful pinky champagne metallic. Core Values is a matte. Appley in Love is a softer metallic. Pick Me is another softer metallic. Apple Sauced is a matte. Then we have Smitten, which is like an icy white shimmer. Sweetie Pie is like a pinky shimmer. Bite Me is like a pinky gold satin. It has a slight sheen to it, but it's not nearly as sparkly as some of the others. Caramel Apple is a matte. Apple of My Eye is a metallic. Candy Apple is like a deep wine red, but it's kind of, this one really didn't swatch very well. This one was definitely patchy on swatch. Then there is Crunch Time, which is a golden metallic. Turnover is a mustard yellow matte. So Snackable is almost like a deep purple mulberry shade. Slice Slice Baby is like a green metallic. Orchard Stroll is a warm brown matte and Baskets Full is a deep brown matte. Okay, so let me zoom you in. We will create three different looks. I'll do one on each eye and then I'll do one to wear for the rest of the day and then we'll get into my final thoughts. All right, that is nice and close. So I'm kind of debating on this one. I think my look for the day is gonna be settling into these browns a little bit. I definitely do wanna do a look with the greens and I'm debating. I know I'm not gonna to wanna to wear this red shade on my eyes, but if I do a look with it today, that will at least kinda of show you what it's gonna look like. So I'll probably do that. I think I'm gonna pick up Sweet On You, which is this shade right here. And I just kind of want to use this as a base shade. I do have concealer and some powder on my lids, but I kind of want to add this one all over just to cancel out anything else. I do love to pick up the Too Faced palettes every year, but they can be a little bit hit and miss. I think I'm going to go in to Core Values next, but on top of that, they usually are 
a bit delayed in coming to Canada for whatever reason. They no longer have the Too Faced Canada website and their main website does not ship to Canada. So that can be frustrating and of course Ulta doesn't ship to Canada. So I ended up actually just ordering this to the UPS store that's just across the border. It's like 20 minutes from my house. So that was how I got my hands on this so, so easily because I knew this week and this weekend I was not going to have time to drive all the way down to Ulta. Okay, I'm gonna grab a smaller brush. I think I'm gonna go into Candy Apple. So I wanna use this one. I kinda of wanted to use this one a little bit more, but I'm gonna try this one because it's swatched really poorly. So I really wanna see how it's actually going to perform on the eyes. It might be a non-issue altogether. It's definitely very pigmented. Seems to be doing okay though. I think I forgot to mention the scent on this palette. So this one is supposed to smell like candy apples. I don't know that that's the scent I'm getting. I am getting a bit of an apple and spice kind of scent, and I don't know if I love it. I don't normally complain about scents in makeup because I don't I don't mind them unless it's an unpleasant scent, but I don't normally mind a scent. This one seems strong to me though. So if you are sensitive to that, you might not like this. I do think last year's palette and their pumpkin spice palette, they definitely had much less of a scent than this. Okay, the deeper red candy apple shade actually did blend out quite nicely on the lid. So it doesn't swatch well, but it does apply quite nicely. I'm gonna grab Sparkling Cider. I'm gonna take this one on a finger, and I think I want this one to be my main lid shade. That's a beautiful, beautiful shade. That is really shiny and sparkly. I do think these metallics and shimmers in this palette are nicer than their usual ones. I do feel like the shimmers in these palettes often feel quite dry. and I don't really think these are like that. They do feel better somehow than some of their past palettes. Okay, I'm gonna grab a brush because I really want that precision and I'm gonna go in to Aptly in Love and this is gonna go on the outer third of the lid. I feel like I want to pick up just a tiny bit more of core values. Kind of blend around that edge a little bit. And then I'm grabbing a bigger brush. I'm going to go into Sweet On You, that kind of off-white shade in the palette. Just to blend around that edge, kind of soften everything down. Okay, and then I'm going to grab a little bit more of Sparkling Cider. I just want to bring this up a little bit more and over a little bit more. I feel like to anchor this look a little bit more, I want to grab Baskets Full, this one right here, and I am going to try to do a bit of a shadow liner. Okay, that is the best you're getting out of me when it comes to anything like a wing, but let me pop off camera. I will pop on some mascara and then I'll come back to show the finished look number one and get into look number two. All right, so here's the finished look number one and I actually really like it. I did not expect to like a look with that aptly in love shade just because I do not like reds on my eyes, but I love the shade Sparkling Cider. I think that shade is gonna be an absolute go-to when I'm in this palette. And I love the way it ended up playing with that red. And then once I used sort of the eyeliner, it definitely anchored the look a little bit and didn't look so much like I'd been rubbing my eye too much. So I feel a lot better about that. I really, really like how it turned out. I'm so surprised, but let's get into look number two. So for look number two, I'm thinking I'm gonna play with the greens. That being said, I'm not fully sure how with this shade and this shade, but I wanna play with it and try to make it work. So I am just going to set everything down with that Sweet On You off-white that we have going on. I just think that made a really nice base and it just kind of helped everything blend out beautifully. Okay, I'm gonna go in to Caramel Apple I think I want to use this as a really light transition. I am noticing the mattes in here have quite a bit of kick up. I can't remember if that's standard for these palettes or not. But again, that does not actually bother me at all. But just keep in mind if it's something that bothers you. I think I just want to use that shade to also try to deepen the crease a little bit. 
I'm not 100% sure. I do wish there were some more matte greens in here to work with the greens. I mean, you can absolutely use the browns and whatnot, but I do wish there was a little bit more of a matte green to work with these greens. Okay. Okay. I'm going to grab a flat brush and I'm going to pick up Pick Me, which is this shade right here. I'm not 100% sure exactly what I'm doing with this one yet, but I am going to start by placing it more toward the outer corner. Just going back into my crease brush, blending around the edges. I don't really know how I feel about this shade yet. Okay, I'm going to pick up a little bit of Pick Me and see... If I can add a little bit here, but also blend it into the crease and kind of see what happens. Mm. It kind of gave me more of that olive green in the crease when mixed with the brown, which I'm okay with, but I really didn't do anything for that outer corner. I'm going to grab that flat brush again and refix this on the corner. This is another look that might need to be sort of anchored with an eyeliner, but we'll see. I'm getting quite a bit of fallout with this shade as well. I'm gonna grab Slice Slice Baby on a finger and I'm going to put this one all over the lid. That's quite pretty. It's kind of a brighter green than I expected. In Swatch, I thought it had almost like a blue shift. I do look kind of apple right now though. Red eye and a green eye. Interesting. Okay, I'm gonna add just a little bit more of Pick Me to the outer corner, just patting it on there so I get sort of maximum color payoff. It's an okay shade. I don't know how I feel about that. I like the green shimmer that I used all over the lid. I think that's super, super pretty. But I don't know that I necessarily love the darker one. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little bit of Crunch Time. This one right here. And I'm just gonna grab that on a brush. And I want this one on the inner corner. Yeah, that looks pretty. I do feel like I should do a little bit of a shadow liner on this side too, though. Just to sort of anchor the look. Okay, so once again, that is kind of the best you're going to get for me in terms of a liner. It doesn't even kind of match the other one, but that's okay because I'm going to take these off to get into the third look, but I will pop off camera, pop on some mascara, and then come back to get into the final look. All right, so this is the finished look number two, and it turned out okay. I like the first look so much more though. I'm definitely getting apple vibes between these two looks though, so I think that's kind of fun. Definitely very on theme for the palette. Um, I actually like this look so much. I don't know why, I don't know how, but I actually really do. Um, the green look is okay. It's not amazing, but it's okay. I do think as of this point, this isn't a palette you're gonna buy for the greens. Just keep that in mind. But let me take these off and then we will get into look number three. Okay, so for the third and final look, like I said, I want to go with something very neutral, very everyday because I am filming another video after this. But I do think I'm going to start with Caramel Apple. I just feel like this is a really perfect transition shade for this look. And because this is going to be my all day look, I did put down my Alter Ego eyeshadow base, and then I actually did top it with that Sweet On You Off-White in the top corner. I do see that shade getting a ton of love for me every time I wear this palette. I did also manage to preserve the eyeshadow uh, when I took off the first two looks, which I like to do because when you take off mascara and then try to put it back on, it just never looks good. And it is kind of nice to work around the mascara too because it does end up catching some fallout sometimes. I know I also said this is really, really early for a holiday palette, and it is, don't get me wrong, it is July, but I'm not mad. I absolutely live for the holiday makeup launch season, but let me know down below what brands are you most looking forward to their holiday launches? What do you want to see me review? And what are you just most excited for in general? I always lose my mind for the Hourglass Holiday Palette, so I will definitely be reviewing those. Um, Huda usually has a really good palette. Hers don't normally come out until October. 
I imagine we'll have something from Natasha Denona. I'm still wondering if we're going to get a mothership from Pat McGrath because I really genuinely don't know. I hope so, but I guess we'll see. But let me know what other brands you are excited for with respect to their holiday launches and let me know of any requests of what you want me to review specifically. Okay, I think I'm gonna pick up a little bit of Orchard Stroll as well. I'm going to concentrate this one on the outer corner, going quite warm with this look. It is quite similar to the first shade I used, but just a little bit deeper, a little bit more warm, a little bit more burnt orange. I'm gonna grab a little bit of applesauce and I'm going to start adding this one to the outer corner. Kind of just stamping it on because I don't want it to be too, too intense. And I might actually switch brushes. And I'm just going into that flat brush I used for that green. I've cleaned it off, but this is a Ruffer 28. And I just want to use this to kind of add it to the outer corner on this side. I like the shape of this one because it is a flat shader, so it does give me the precision that I'm usually looking for. So now I'm going to pick up Apple of My Eye on a finger and just place this one all over the lid. I think this is going to be so pretty. It's like a golden champagne. That's really pretty. I really like that. Okay, same thing on the other eye. All right, so here is the finished look number three and I like it of course it's a very me look definitely very everyday very neutral but still nice and pretty so let me zoom you out and then I will share my thoughts on the looks how the palette performed and then I will show you some comparisons to some of their other holiday palettes all right so overall I thought this palette performed quite well. Shockingly enough, the first look I created with this Apple in Love shade, that red that I thought is going to be awful on my eyes is actually my favorite look that I created. I did not expect that at all. The greens were okay. The browns performed great. I always expect browns to perform very well. The greens were okay. The look was fine, but I do, like I said, I do wish there was more of a matte green to kind of play off of these, and I think I would have enjoyed that more. I was tempted to play with the pinks a little bit more, but I really wanted to get into that red shade and the greens because those are sort of the standouts of the palette. I was pleased that this one, even though it did not swatch well, it performed very well on the eyes. So I was pleased with that. This one actually did look really, really pretty as well. It wasn't overpowering. I loved how the look came together with those shades. This shade is still my favorite one in the whole entire palette. I just absolutely loved how it looked on the eyes. I thought it was so, so pretty. And I will definitely be maybe creating look number one again in the future or playing this one with the other pinks in here as well. And definitely these deeper mulberry shades. I think that's really beautiful. This one is a really pretty inner corner shimmer. I think that's gorgeous. And like I said, the browns did perform as expected. Browns typically do perform quite well. The greens, like I said, I wish there was more of a matte green in here to play up those greens just a little bit more. This one is fine, but I would have liked something a little more matte, maybe with a little bit more depth. I was able to build it up and sort of pack it on, but not quite to the level that I wanted. When I did mix it with this one in the crease, it did give me more of an olive tone, which I kind of liked for the purpose of creating more of a base for my shadow. This shade is really, really pretty too, but it is very soft. As for these more mustard tones, I didn't get into these. I will eventually, but I just don't typically go for those types of shades as much either. But I am confident they will perform okay given that they are in the brown, gold, bronze realm. But overall, I'm really pretty with the way this palette performed. I noticed on swatch it felt softer and the shades felt creamier than some of their past holiday palettes. I know obviously my pumpkin spice palette is pretty old at this point, but even when that one was brand new, I felt like it had sort of a dryness to it that I feel like these don't. 
Is the formula similar? Absolutely, it feels very, very similar, but I do feel like these perform slightly better than the others. I felt that way about last year's palette too. I also thought that one was very, very good. But let me quickly show you a couple of comparisons. So we have this year's Apple in Love palette, and then we have last year's Maple Syrup Pancakes palette. This year's palette is definitely playing more into those grungy fall tones, Apple Orchard vibes very, very much. I do think they did a really nice job with the color story. Last year's palette is definitely softer, though they did try to get into those more purples and blues. There's quite a bit of purple. There is one pop of blue in here as well. Otherwise, it's kind of their standard. You get these browns, you get some pinks, and then they threw in some purples, greens, and a blue pop. I will say I like last year's greens much, much better. I just think this matte is really nice. It would have been nice in this year's palette, I think. This brown has a slight olive tone to it, so it actually does play very, very well with the greens. So I do think they did a better job with last year's green shades. The purples last year, these two shades really didn't perform that well at all on the eyes or in general. I didn't love them, but the rest of them looked really, really nice. They played very, very well. Last year they did try to go for this cardboard packaging, which I don't mind, but I do prefer the tin for their holiday palettes. The only other holiday palette I have from Too Faced is the pumpkin spice palette. So, I mean, there's similarities. You're getting some pinks, you're getting some browns, and you're getting some of these deeper mulberry shades in there. But the pumpkin spice palette definitely went into those pinks and greens. Definitely on the softer side. Again, I do kind of like the greens in here better than the new palette, but this one is almost half of this one is almost more like a pastel so it's actually really nice for spring as well you can see they're definitely in the same family but they are different enough in my opinion so i definitely want to give Too Faced some credit for this year's palette because while you can tell it's definitely very much in the same family as their other holiday palettes if you cover up some of these pops of color it's going to look very similar. However, this year they didn't really actually put any of these purples in here. They didn't even try for a blue, which is fine with me. Honestly, I do not think Too Faced excels at purples, so it kind of makes sense that they just took them out altogether, except for maybe this shade. And like I said, you can tell it's in the same family as their other palettes, but it's different enough that I do feel excited about it. I definitely look at this and think, Apple Orchard. I definitely think that they did a really, really good job with the theme, which is something that they don't normally do. I mean, their names of shades are always very on brand for the theme of the palette, but shade wise, I don't know that we're always getting a very well themed out shade selection. Whereas this one, I feel like they did, and I actually feel like the quality of this one is really good. So I'm quite pleased with this palette. And if you were thinking of picking this one up, I don't think you'd be disappointed. I will say, don't pick this up for the greens because I don't feel like that is the strong point of the palette. I think they're nice in here. I think they definitely have a place in terms of the apple theme. So I think that's really nice. And maybe I'll find a shade combination that I'll like more when trying to get into those green shades. I don't love the look I created today, but maybe I'll find something that I like very, very soon. So I can't say anything bad about the palette in terms of that. Is it Natasha Denona quality? Absolutely not. But is it good for Too Faced? Absolutely. And is it better than some of their past holiday palettes? Yeah, and I'm more impressed with the color story. So that's kind of where I land on that. I do think it's really pretty, and if you like to collect these and you wanted it, I don't think you'll be disappointed. That is it for me today. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. Are you thinking about picking this one? Did you already? Did you change your mind? Let me know all of your thoughts. I just love hearing from you guys so, so much. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. I do upload new videos every single week. Thank you again so very much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.